Support for Talking Town is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Hold up, fellas. I don't think we've quite understood what I'm talking about here. We've gone years in the UK without using the right tools for the job. Long gone are the days of a razor blade in the mirror. No more shall we look like Sideshow Bob down there. Manscaped have redesigned the electric trimmer. Their engineering team have perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and have just released the new and approved Lawnmower 3.0 in the UK. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents because nobody wants a bloodbath in the bathroom. Did I tell you? It's got waterproof technology so you can dim those lights, get yourself in the shower and groom to your heart's content. Whatever you do, however you do it, do it with Manscaped's Lawnmower 3.0. And don't forget, you can get 20% off and free delivery with the code TT. Manscaped.com. Make your testies their besties. I'm maybe on holiday, but the shows keep coming. Thanks to the faithful uh, and fantastically creative and competent contributors. Uh, I'm coming to you live from Windsor. I've just had dinner at the foot of Windsor Castle, having explored it today. Absolutely beautiful. If you've not yet been, I do thoroughly recommend it. Uh, my role tonight will be one thing, one thing only, producing the show from behind the scenes. Uh, it, it's been a big week in ITFC. Lots of debate, lots of things to talk about not really up to date with any of it so uh introducing tonight's show uh, hosting it is none other than um everyone's favorite mr neutral mr switzerland the yeah, welcome in cruncher how you doing i've got one thing to say to you olives get in the bin i, I mate olives are absolutely beautiful Some i'm not having them cobbled street sun was bleating beer was being drunk olives i could have been anywhere I was in Windsor. Not really a fan. I know Lee Anderson said he eats them, but he's not sort of, he couldn't make out what they are. Yeah, I'm not a big fan, mate, myself. Anyway, you well? I'm very well. I'm very well. Now, I'm going to quickly duck out because alongside you should unpack this busy, busy week. I know you've got lots to discuss. Uh, are two wonderful people. First of all, it is Peaky Blinder, Mark Tuxford. Mark, thank you for joining us. I know it's not quite the same as you've so delightfully told me with without me I, I really appreciate that but thank you for joining us are you well i'm well i'm well how are you how's your holiday you've been catching the sun better than i have i mean i need to know what sort of tanning product you use because you've been in the garden for one barbecue you say and look at you i mean I've been well in, yeah, I've, I've been in a, i've been in the, i've been in the garden for a couple of bar- barbecues and the sun has been out all of the time that i've been in the garden so as long as the old current buns out i'll get a tan absolutely and the third member of this wonderful trio needs no introduction he's simply the goat uh, and maybe you can ask him about tom lawrence and that link that you had cruncher is of course colin the goat colin you are a legend i am ducking out cruncher you're in charge have a evening colin 
Hey there, Rich. How are you, mate? <coughs> Excuse me. How, how are you, mate? All right. I'm good, mate. Are you looking good. forward to your holidays? Oh, very much so. Well, last year, obviously, we didn't, we didn't have nowhere because of COVID. And the year before that, I had I had my um, unfortunate heart attack. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so we, me and Venetia haven't been away for two years. So, yeah, really looking forward to it, mate. And we go, we go to Cornwall. We used to go to Cornwall all the time. You know, I love Cornwall. It's absolutely beautiful. You'll have a better tan than you. You'll have a better tan than you, Tux, when he comes back. You'll be getting one of them. You'll be getting one of them white shirts, the new away white shirt. You'll be wearing that with your tan, won't you? Oh, um, all day long, mate. <laughs> yes, so I am in charge tonight. What can go wrong? But look, I've got me trusty, me man up the top there. Do you want to um, give your podcast a plug, Mark? Because I'm. Um, I was yes. a bit behind. I had to listen to three episodes back to back, and then I listened to uh, the one that was released. Was it yesterday? I listened this morning. Top stuff. Not yeah. Me. So uh, each episode is uh, released on every Wednesday. Uh, it's People Behind Brands podcast. You can find it on all good audio major platforms: uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Deezer, uh, Google Podcast, and all that sort sort of stuff. Really. So, yeah, we're talking to uh, different types of people from the world of business. Really, they go really quite in depth with their life lessons. Um, so we get right to the heart of the sort of the challenges that they've experienced over the years, uh, how they've sort of founded their businesses uh, and all that type of thing, really. So, um, yeah, give it a listen. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I say, uh, every every new episode is on a Wednesday. So you've done 11, haven't you? I think was today the 11th. Yeah, how so... Uh, you keep, how are you keeping going? Yeah, so I've got uh, 11 live now. I think I've probably recorded near probably to sort of around 20, I think, now. So um, I've got ones in the bank, so to say. But, um, yeah, 11 live at the moment. So you can also uh, listen to previous episodes as well. So, uh, yeah, get involved. Catch up, Colin. It's a very, very good listen. Get it on your own Bluetooth on your car down to Cornwall. I know you're he heading down there at midnight tomorrow night. Get it on. You yeah, mate, yeah. Mosey your way through the, through the episodes from 1 to 11. It's great. Right, so where do yeah. we want to start? Shall we? I think the big thing this week was um, obviously the Cobalt stand. Um, look, I don't know what you two think, but it's been looking tired, hasn't it, for not just that stand, the whole stadium. And it's nice, nice now that they've actually they're they're taking care of it because we we obviously see, didn't we, Mark Ashton when he done his interview was it a couple of weeks ago, and he was embarrassed mm. about the stadium. So, yeah, well, as I said on Twitter the other day, it's it's criminal that you know Marcus Evans has you know let the stadium get to that kind of level. Really, um, you know, it's it was once a proud fortress, and you know, you get when just before COVID, you go there and you you know you go through the concourses, you go through the stands and all that type of stuff, and it was just it was horrible. It was embarrassing. Um, you know, this is a once great club, um, and I'd say that the actual stadium sort of sums up where we are as a club at the moment. Um, and hopefully with the sort of new improvements and stuff like that, you know, hopefully that that's a sign of things to come with, with the team on the pitch as well. Um, and, and the club overall, really. What do you think, Colin? Well, when I, when I think back, you know, I can remember that stand, <clears throat> excuse me. I can remember going over with my dad because my dad was always interested in stuff like that. Um, when the stand was actually built, you know, when it used to be the old East stand, we used to call it a chicken run. And they knocked that down in about 1970, 71, and they, re they they built the cobble stand. When they originally built that, they it was it was a lot shorter actually. It was it, the ends of the stand came to about where the edge of the both the eighteen yard boxes, and they they let they, they they built a little bit more on the ends as they went on. But I remember that being built, and obviously it was seats at the top, and it was terrace at the bottom then. But when they first built that, you know, uh, Rich and Tux, and by the way, good evening, Tux, I'm sorry, I do, I do, I do no apologize. Um, when they first built that, um, it was it was the first cantilever, I'll remember that, it was the first cantilever stand uh, because of the road. It was the first cantilever stand built in built in England, that was. And, um, you know, it was kind of state-of-the-art, really, in 1971, 72. And um, and then and then they improved it. You know, they made it longer, so it joined like the churchmen's and the north stands or was then. And then a few years later, I can't remember about four or five years later, they, then they put the seats in at a bob. And um, yeah, so yeah, and and that was a lovely lovely stand then. And I remember me and Dad used to quite often go in and 
the centre spot. I mean, it was the centre spot was salubrious then. I mean, anybody will tell you that. And the blue seats, what are in the middle, actually, my father-in-law, Venetia's dad and brother, uh, they had a little building business. They they had a couple of those seats in the blue seats, and uh, you know they they were they were really really uh, fantastic places to sit. You know, in the sta in in the stadium then, but. Um, yeah, as the years went on, God, oh, my, I've spoken about the AstroTurf and everything. But the back of that stand and the and the gates underneath where the entrance is, where people go in and out of the bottom of that cobble stand, it wasn't awful. It was worse than that. And, and um, you know, fair play. I'll tell you what, actually, Rich, I nearly messaged you today. I'd love to, I'd love to be able to speak to that Mark Ashton. And I'd like to say to him, I'd like to shake his hand and I'd like to say, very well done in the few weeks you've been here because I'll tell you what, like I said to you today, Rich, he's not just, he's not just talk the talk, he's walk the walk. And, and uh, I, I applaud him for that. Yeah, it was an interesting, guys, when he said, um, I see a bit, uh, I think it was yesterday, the East Anglia put out about when he, um, when he came to the club and he had his nice suit on and he didn't want to sit on the seats because... <laughs> You look at them, the, the rust. They're, going back to that, um, them seats in the middle of the cobble, I've only sat in there once, Colin, for the, um, that was the FA Youth Cup final when we beat Southampton. Right, OK. Um, they used to give a programme away, didn't they? You get a free programme, I think free parking. Mm. They're yeah. very expensive. Free car parking. Yeah. Oh, yeah you used to get free car parking. You used, used to get free car parking in the cattle market. Cattle market car park. Yeah. Yeah. No, but they, I mean, no season tickets. I mean, obviously, you're talking about top flight football, and you're talking about town top top of the league more, more than not, you know. So, you, so, but those season tickets. I mean, I can't. I'm, I can't remember how much they were now. To be perfectly honest, it was a long, long time ago. But they were obviously a lot more than like seats in the old West Stand, as it's called then, before they built the Pioneer. Yeah, I mean, because obviously you didn't have seats in the North, you didn't have seats in the Churchmans. The only seats you had in the ground then were, obviously, they had, they had a few seats in the old chicken run, but when they not, yeah, you had the seats in the top of the cobble and you had the seats in the top of the, what was the old, the old, what, the old West Stand? But that's all it was, you know? 831 quid, them seats, season tickets in the chat. What, that, what, what now, Richard? Yeah. Are they? Fancy one of them? <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, I, I went to the first game uh, when the new North Stand opened. Uh, I think it was Chelsea uh, against Ipswich, obviously it was nil-nil. Um, I remember going to the right to the top uh, and sitting right at the top and there was two Chelsea fans behind us um, and they was just mouthing off the whole game. But that, you know, I remember that being open and I thought, this is what we needed. This is a kind of sort of, this is what the ground needed, this is what the club needed. But... Obviously, some of that kind of impacted how we went with administration and, and yeah. stuff like that, really. But, you know, we was never to kind of, you know, you don't you can't predict the future with that sort of thing. But, yeah, I remember it being open. It just looked really smart. And over the years, that's kind of been sort of forgotten about. And, you know, I know they just like sort of cleared the moss off it on at the back of the North Stand now. But, you know, there's I walked through um, the South Stand not long ago. And uh, it's just, it's not great. It's really horrible. Like, it's just not a... It's not a great feel to walk through there, you you know, especially on a match day as well. It's just, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me just how that stadium is sort of decreased, really. Well, he's just, Evans just let it go to pop. Yeah. And, he's, he's, and I see today, it wasn't just that. They've been like washing the stands. They've been weeding. Mm. Uh, there's a new sign gone up on the shop, I see, uh, with the yeah. guys in the NHS um, that on there, which is a nice touch. And you think, it, it doesn't take a lot, does it, to just... No. And it's not, look, it's not going to happen overnight because Ashton said there's lots of things they want to do. But when we go back on that that first game against Morecambe, I don't know if you're going to the, either of the friendlies, Mark, I'm not. I'm really looking forward to it because we've been away for so long. Yeah. And it's just like them nice little touches. Yeah. Um, look, it's, we're it's, get it's the history. To... It's, it's the history of it our is. club, right? And, you know, if you, can't, if you can't be proud, like someone like Marcus Evans, to showcase what our history is all about, then shame on you. Because... You know, this is this used to be a a very proud club, and it still is to a certain extent with the fan base that we've got. But you know, 
we, we've just we've just completely gone missing, really. And you think about it from a community point of view as well. That you know Norwich and Colu, they've been in our schools and like taking all the kids that want to you know play for the academies and stuff like that. That's what we should be doing. We should be right at the heart of that. And now we're sort of back into that. And it's like what Colin yeah. said earlier with with Mark Ashton coming in. And he he wants that. He wants to be a part of that. And he sort of he sees that as the moment he walks in, the the chairs are dirty. He can't sit on those chairs because they're too dirty. And he looks around the club and he thinks. I'm not, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. He knows he's got he's got a big Tough. challenge ahead of him, but he hasn't got what it needs. Uh, you know, he, he couldn't see from a, a point of view that, you know, I'm talking about Marcus Evans, he couldn't see a point of view of where this club was going as a community going forward. And that's what that's that's what we've always needed is that strategy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, Tux, I just leading on from that, uh, leading on from what I said earlier on about Mark Ashton. And <clears throat> I'd love to say this because I really mean what I'm going to say. I'll tell you what, Mark Ashton, he, when you think about people like John Cobble, Patrick Cobble, Lady Blanche, I'd say I don't need notes, Lady Blanche Cobble, all these people, David Sheepshanks, who was an incredible person for this football club, Bobby Robson, George Burley, just name the lot of them, the people who've made this football club. But going back to Mark Ashton, I'll tell you what, if he gets this right, and I've got, got no reason to believe that he won't, if he gets this completely right, and he gets whoever, whoever it will be, whether it be Paul Cook or whoever's the manager at the time, sitting in press conferences doing exactly what Daniel Farker was doing today, I'll tell you, he'll go down as a legend at this football club. He's got so many people on his, on his side at the moment he, he doesn't even want to dream how many people he's got on his side. He's got, in my opinion, he's got nearly ev nearly everybody on his side. And if he carries on like this and he gets us back into the championship next season, which I'm sure everybody wa wants to be next season, not a season after, but we get in the championship with, within a season under him and then we get in the Premier League within three years after that, he'll become a legend this football, football club. That man, it's he really will. It's interesting when you what you look with in the chat there. I see apparently this was planned under Evans the mural. I've not actually seen that, but there's some people saying in the chat. But yeah, but he's, he's had yeah. ten years to do it, though, hasn't he? Yes. He's had ten years to do it. Why, why is he waiting exactly. till now? We can all say that we was planning to do this, planning to do that. He's had ten years to do it. Definitely. What What do we think of that? Look, I think there was over forty people, wasn't there, on the mural? I, look, I've got. I've wrote down here where it starts, who's on there, whatever. I said to Colin the other day, Tuts, we could all have a conversation. I could pick 40 people. You could pick 40 people. Colin, everyone in the chat. The only thing I personally, you might disagree with me, I tweeted it out. Um, I would have liked a couple of the women's team to be on there. Mm. I understand why they're not on there, but I think nowadays where it's going, the game, uh, and I know people are saying that they don't play at the stadium, hopefully – this season, that might change. They might have one or two games there, which I think would be a great, great thing. It'd be good if they played sort of before the men's team, maybe. You know, that's an idea. Probably, look, Ashton, I know when he was at Bristol City, he was big on the women's team. So there's probably that sort of stuff in the pipeline. So what do you think? Is there anyone you would have had on, anyone you wouldn't have on there, both of you? Um, I think, to be honest, I haven't really seen uh, in fully in full depth of who is and who isn't on there. But I think, you know, I do agree that, you know, at some stage, whether it should be now, I don't know. But in the future, there should be, you know, the women's sides added to that. Um, but, you know, could you could you put the, the FA Youth, Youth Cup winning side on there? You know, that's, that's still a part of our history as well. So, you know, it, are we focused really on the first team or do we talk about the youth? Do we talk about the women's side and all that type of things? So it's all it's all part of our history. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I, I can't really comment to say who is and who isn't on there. But, you know, from the ones that I have seen on there, obviously they're all fully deserving of their place on there, really. So, uh, yeah. The, the thing is, Mark, uh, and I know Richard knows what I'm going to say. Um, if Mark Ashton or anybody is watching the show tonight, and I'd like to say hello and very well done what you've done so far, Mark, if you are watching this. There's only one person, or sorry, there's a couple of three people, but one person to my heart, because he was one of my favourite players. I cannot believe that Colin Hill John is not on that list. I really can't believe. And there's also another person I totally agree with with Richard. 
um, we were speaking the other day, who was on there, is John Lyle. Yeah, and, I was really surprised at that. You know, it, that's one of my favourite, that's probably my favourite season, that, Colin and Tux, the 91-92 yeah. season. It was, wasn't really a lot expected and we were, we had a great side. And I, look, I know you can't, you can't recognise everybody. You've only got so many. They're probably, like Tux says, they're only probably, I think personally in the end, if we, the plan goes where we're hoping to go, I think that stand will be knocked down anyway. Mm. Yeah, I think so. But going back, Rich, going back, I didn't say this to you the other day, going back to about Colin John, and I know he's everybody's favourite of my of my um of my era. Um not not everybody's favourite, but everybody's favourite midfield player, maybe. Ace they used to call him is a fantastic player. Um the only unfortunate thing what happened was, and that was just prior to the cup final actually, it all finished rather quite sad between him and uh, Bobby, which was quite unbelievable, really, because he went to Chelsea from us, believe it or not. But he, I can't remember what his stats were. I think he played, and this is really off the top of my head. Richie might be able to get him. I think he played... Keep, keep, keep talking, I'll have a look. I think, if I remember, he played 300 and something appearances. This is a mid, central mid. Um, scored no end of goals from, from that position, scored no end of penalties, great penalty taker. Um, he 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 became a legend because he made his debut. Games, 305 games, 45 goals, 66 okay. to 78. Yeah, and, and, and he became a legend because he, he made his debut, believe it or not, at Carra Road in a 4-3 win and he got a bloody hat trick. He got a hat trick on his debut at Carroll Road. You know, you're going to be immortal, aren't you? From from you know from that day onwards, you know, yeah, he got a hat trick, four three win at Carroll Road. You know, it's just quite unbelievable. I think it was in the old second division just before we went up in '68. But uh, yeah, good player. And I mean, not only was, he was South African born, born in Johannesburg, and he 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 got a British passport and he actually finished up playing for England. Don Rivy picked him. He played a couple of three times for England. I actually watched him when we played um, when we played Scotland. So can I, yeah. Can I just um, can I just put Hawks right in the chat there? No, I will not be handing out pictures from a bum bag in the fan zone. Did you see that, Mark Neil Warnock? No, what was that? He got, last <laughs> night he was at the um, where was it? They played Tavistock, Colin. Down yes, Hall. mate. Yeah. They had a friend. Yeah. I'll, I'll find it and I'll, I'll send it to you. He, um, he was walking, it was after the game finished. There's a girl in the stand there, a young girl, and he goes up to her and gets, he's got um, a bum bag. He pulls out a signed picture of himself and gives it to her. Absolute, <laughs> absolute <laughs> he's he different class, class, that's like, he's different class. But, but yeah, uh, getting, look, getting back to it, there's someone in the chat there. I think Mike, uh, Mike saying um, Daly and Atkinson, good shout, yeah. but you, you're never going to make everybody happy, are you? Yeah. There's always going to be someone who, Look, it's a nice touch. We've actually, we're recognising our history. I know um, Martin's behind the um, scenes tonight. He doesn't agree that Luke Chambers is on there. I think he should be. You know, I, yeah, think, he's I, done I think he should be. I think he should he's be. I think he's, he's, been, he's been a good servant to the club. Yeah, OK, he's not been always the best on the pitch. And yes, OK, he's been one of the people, he was the captain that took us down uh, in relegation a couple, of, a couple of years ago. But ultimately, I think he's always given 100% to the cause. Uh, you know, he bleeds blue. Uh, and I think he was he was generally gutted to to not sort of stick around for this season. Um, but, you know, it, it was the right time for him to go. But, uh, you know, fully deserving, I think, to be on the on the Cobbold stand. Yeah. I think, the, I, think, I think the real good thing that they got absolutely 100% right was the... It was the, the the main pictures of people in Millsy, Burley, Beatty, Ramsey, mm. Robson. They got the main ones right, didn't they, Rich? That's another thing, Colin. When have you heard when the um, statue is going to be unveiled? I, I've not heard anything on that. Uh, have, uh, oh, well, I'll tell you what. I was talking to. I had to go and see my mum, and I was thought, you know, obviously Ollie Hughes's dad has got the garage. I went and took my card and he had, had a little look over it, you know, for a while away. And I was talking to David this morning, Ollie Hughes' dad, who plays for Barry, and uh, he said he thought he heard something on Radio Suffolk about the unveiling, but he couldn't remember when it was. But they were speaking about it today, apparently, on Radio Suffolk, Rich, and Tuck. Yeah, I might, I, I might, um, 
I'll drop Mark Murphy a message because obviously he'll probably know. But um, obviously now with the COVID restrictions lifting, I'd have thought it would probably be fairly soon. I would have thought mm. maybe not not first game of the season, but I wouldn't have thought it's going to be long. But moving on from the mural, I did actually say this on this show. I don't know if you've seen it, Mark. We're actually uh, we're going to be a cashless stadium. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, I saw that. That's good. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great step forward for, you know, the stadium, which is obviously a very old sort of classic stadium now, uh, moving into what is the 21st century, uh, finally. But, um, you know, it is, it's, it's just the way things are going. And obviously with COVID go, coming about now, you know, you've, you've got to be sort of careful with, you know, handing things over to, you know, other people really. So, you know, the, the ticket, ticket you know the cashless sort of stuff and uh you know the internet sort of tickets are coming in at the right time i think but in fairness i think marcus evans did say he was he was planning to do that anyway um but yeah it's it's all sort of coming together quite nicely i think for the stadium now i think you know obviously with the talk of uh you know the, the dugouts potentially being moved or at least you know um updated uh and then obviously with a you know a pitch that has some sort of like under soil heating uh, you know, all of those things we need. I think we also need to, a couple of big screens here and there as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, all of those good things. Where I would think. you put them? Where Sorry? Would you put them? Where would you, if you had a screen, would you you'd probably, the only place I could think at the minute is in the corner sort of where the away fans are. Yeah, I think I'll probably yeah. certainly put one there and then you might be able to get one uh, probably where the window is, where the club shop is potentially. Yeah, I agree because uh, because obviously, look, we had the vote this week that their music walk out, gold, whatever. I think if mm. I've been to grounds where you have your big screens and you get like a montage 10 minutes before kickoff, get some yeah. music on, goals from like yesteryear coming towards today, fantastic idea. And it's like, I know probably before Evans wasn't, look, he had the money, didn't he? But he didn't really want to do that. But I think now it, it probably won't be now. I know you talk about the pitch. The dugouts are a disgrace. They are yeah. an absolute shambles, yeah. aren't they? I think it wasn't that because what, um, Roy Keane. Uh, Go on, Colin. Sorry, I was just going to say on 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 the dugout point. I'll tell you what. I think there's been a total embarrassment for at least the last ten to fifteen years. Total yeah. embarrassment. I mean, they should have been replaced ten years at least ago. You know. It's, Oh dear! Oh, there's just been an embarrassment, and there's been so many things what are an embarrassment to us, you know, as a as a supporter base, you know. I think because uh, mm. yeah, and and I well, I to be honest with you, if I'm going to be honest with everybody, I I don't know what on earth Marcus was thinking half the time. I really don't. That's if he was thinking about anything. It didn't seem like it didn't seem like it to me. But well, those yeah. those dugouts didn't. Have... Didn't they come about because Roy Keane had said he didn't want he wanted uh, roofs to come off the dugouts because he thought they did have roofs on, didn't they? They did have, yeah, at one stage, and then he took yeah. them off, I think, because he said that the sub shouldn't just feel, you know, cozy and underneath a jacket. You know, if, if the players are going to get wet playing outside, yeah. you know, they can get wet sitting down, not playing, because you know, at the end of the day, it's you need to be on the pitch, that kind of thing. So. I think everyone was kind of all, all for it when it, when he first sort of said it, I think. Um, but, yeah, ultimately, then you know, you just need a couple of rules on them, don't they, really? And there was talk about him being moved to where the uh, cobalt stand is, a bit like what Fulham do, where you have to walk across the pitch to get to yeah. it. Maybe. I don't know. I see Mike Brown in the chat there. He's on about um, the away fans should be moved. I think, Mike, they have – they've asked the police before to move them down to the north yeah. stand, and I think it, that'd be too much – too much yeah. grief. I know it, it would improve the atmosphere if you had them next to, like, obviously where the majority of our sort of hardcore fans are. But I just think it's just asking for more trouble, isn't it? I think. Yeah. I don't know what you two think of that. Well, I think it's uh, it's it's the coach outside, really, isn't it? Especially when you get like the the big team sort of come down. I always remember in the championship when you had like you know the the Millwalls and uh, Sheffield sides and all that kind of stuff. They would they'd come down in their forces, Cardiff even as well. Yeah, um, and they they park outside their their away coaches would park right outside where the the away ticket office is, and then all they've got to do is get off the coach and walk in. Job done. Um, so you know if you move that, you know it's, it's you know there's probably more. More, more chance of uh, you know fan role free over balling, I suppose. Yeah, Leeds, Leeds, Leeds United came into that category yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> big time. Yeah, but you've got some big followings this season. You know, Sheffield Wednesday, obviously Sunderland coming down. 
Yeah. LinkedIn bring a lot, you know. So hopefully, look, hopefully first game of season. I wouldn't have thought Morecambe are going to bring more than three, four hundred maybe. But I think they only get a couple of thousand just over at home, didn't they, for their games. But it's um, yeah. it's positive moves, everything going on. We Look, we'll move on to signings or lack of them. Um, I know uh, Hayden Coulson, he's been linked, played last night, and then he for Middlesbrough scored two goals. The East Anglian, they seem nailed on that he's going to be signed, didn't they? I don't, I don't know what's sort of holding it up. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, from what I've heard, he's he's a good player. I don't know too much about him. I think uh, Jonathan Woodgate gave him his debut, but um, he's sort of been in and out of the side, I think, since sort of then, really, and he's not really been under. I don't think Warnock's really that too keen on him and I think that's probably hence the loan sort of deal rather than a permanent one maybe but yeah I think it'd be a solid signing I think uh, you know as much as Miles Kenlock probably had a probably his best couple of months last season for in the whole time he's played for us I don't think he's the answer going forward uh, we've got the the new left back his, his name's uh, gone out of my head now but Penny. that's it yeah and you know two left backs is certainly what we've needed for quite a while now so um yeah, I, hopefully we can get him. Uh, I think he seems to very seems to be very attack minded. I think he can play a number of positions as well. So, yeah, it's it's a good one to have. I think. Yeah, I think he'll come in. I think I think Penny will be um, a squad player, guys. I, I would have mm. thought if you're looking to sign another left back. Yeah, uh, and I know Penny can play. He can play on the left of midfield. But he did say, I see when he signed that wasn't his favourite position. But um, mm. look at. I see a few people on social media today getting frustrated we've not signed a centre-back. People do need to realise the window doesn't shut on the first day of the season. It goes till the end of August. And, and not just us, there'll be other teams signing players right up to to the 31st, you know. So I, I wouldn't be getting too worried at the minute. I'd still, I still would like another set, well, at least one centre-back, I think, to come in. Because um, at the minute, yeah, I think we... I, you know, I'm I'm really excited for the start of the season, seeing how this this squad gels and stuff like that. But my my worry is with so many new players coming in, is how long you know do they get to gel? How long will it take? Um, and you know, I think there's certain key areas of this side where we have a we need to have a spine through the, through the yeah. side, um, and that starts yeah, really with with the goalkeeper, but the centre backs in there as well. I agree with what you say, Tux, but I, I think on the, at the same time. I think we're, so, we're, you know, not like the last couple of years. We're signing players now that really, I know you've got to, Jan. It goes without saying, but I think with the, the quality players we're signing, I think it might be just that little bit easier, you know what I mean, to 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 understand exactly what, because one or two of them obviously play for Cookie anyway. And I think, you know, like a bit like Lee Evans and um, and the like, you know, I think that will be, a lot easier for them to to interact with each other and to and and to and to uh, hit the ground running. And I, I but I was going to say to you, Rich. I I know much about it lately, but we keep talking about the centre half. I I very much hope they get. Is it the boy Gibson from Everton? Is it Gibson? Yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago. They were talking yeah. about it. Yeah. He's got. Um, I it's think he's in, year, he's in the last year of his contract. Yeah, Reading, uh, um, Everton. He was on loan at Reading last year. The season before, he played quite a bit for Fleetwood in this league, so he knows the division. I'd have thought someone like him, you're going to be able to get him for a sort of. Then they're not going to want a lot of money, are they? He, he, he reminds me a little bit of Luke Garbutt when he was at Everton. He's one of them players who's never going to play for Everton. You know, they're mm. obviously decent footballers, but they're never going to they're never going to play for that for their club. So he would be. An ideal sort of signing. He's played in the league. He's at a good age, but I'd still like I said before, Tuck, someone like your DeVos, mm. um, Matt Elliott. You know, we had him on yeah. loan. Yeah. I mean, he only played eight or nine games, but someone in that ilk who you do you do need a, an experienced campaigner yeah. that needs to come in and just sort of be that kind of like that voice of Luke Chambers in a way, but you know, have a bit more ability, a bit more quicker, you know, probably around the sort of the 28, 29 year old sort of mark, really, you know, that Bradley from Luton was going to sort of be that kind of, that kind of player, I suppose. But, you know, yeah, I completely agree. We need that kind of stalwart at the back. That's going to be the the guy that sort of takes that, that back four forward, if you like. Because I know you've got someone in the chat there, Bagger, will he be in the squad? You've got him and you've got uh, Ndava. Mm. 
They really need to. I think they need to go out and play a season yeah. of probably League Two yeah. football. Get them out playing week yeah. in, week out. A bit like when um, Wolfie went to Swindon mm. and he played forty odd yeah. games. Yeah, do, do him the world of good, you know, to go and play League football. Yeah. Playing twenty threes football at the minute, not really. They're not going to learn, are they? Oh, they mm. need to go somewhere and get kicked, get elbowed, and learn yeah. the hard way. Well, I mean, arguably, you could say that, like, you know, someone like Nciala is that experienced campaigner because he's he's been there and done it kind of with with Shrewsbury, you know, sort of stop start with us a little bit. But you know, you've got Wolfenden who's kind of coming into a bit more of an experienced player now, and then you've got the, the kids such as Bagger and uh, and and Arva. But yeah, I completely agree with what you're saying about the, the the kids that they need to go out and play League Two football, not you know, not in the non-league. They need to go and play out you know proper sort of football every Saturday type thing and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the trouble with me, with with Enciala is for me he's not he's not you can't depend on him you can't you can't hang your hat on him and for me uh, I'm surprised that Cook is still sort of keeping him around really because if anyone was going to sort of go for me it would have been him straight away but um, yeah we'll see we'll see what he's see what he does this season but I think we do need an experienced campaigner to sort of come in and hit the ground running really yeah you could maybe keep. Keep one of them youngsters. If you got you got Wolfie, you got Toto. Add your experienced centre back, and then maybe keep a Bagger or an Indaba as a fourth choice. Mm. But I think mm-hmm. maybe they would they'd benefit more than sitting on the bench. Might have a few minutes yeah. here. Might play the Papa Johns. Yeah. Is that really any good? Hox. Yeah. No, Wilson was a good player. I did rate him. I looking now at what we've got. He would have been ahead of all of them for me because I yeah. thought. Yeah. James Wilson last year, he had a he had a decent season, didn't he? Mm. I, was, I was so surprised that he went, if I'm honest, because not just because he was player of the year, because none of them really deserved it, but the fact was that when he played, we looked more of a solid outfit at the back. Um, and yeah, okay, he had sort of injuries here and there, you know, sort of times getting on a little bit for him as well. But, you know, I'm fully back him to have like a solid season for, for Plymouth, really. Um, but... Yeah, it's, it would be interesting to see what these players will do, especially the ones at Cole Yu, because I think that Cole Yu might have a good good year next year. And it's the fact that the, the players know each other. And OK, they knew each other at Ipswich and didn't do very well. But in, in a league below, playing their sort of preferred positions, like Judge is going to play in the central mid, Sears will probably be as a striker as well. And I back them to actually do all right, because they'll, they'll be playing in their rightful positions. And I think Wilson... We'll have a solid season as well. So I'm, I, I was surprised that we sort of got rid of him, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think he's like your, you know, nonsense defender. He's not. Yeah. He's not sort of no frills, is he? He heads it, yeah. kicks it, yeah. tackles. Yeah. Someone probably I'd look to sign someone like him, but someone who could, if we get promoted, which we want to, who can play at the next level. Mm. And I think James Wilson, he's a League One player, isn't he? Really, you think? Yeah. But then, look, you agree with Cali there? The defense was good last year. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it's goals. It's goals this season that's gonna um that's gonna get you out of this league. And we've got we've got. I know Mike Brown was. I see him on Twitter last night. He's a little bit worried where the goals coming from. I wouldn't be worried. I wouldn't no. be worried where the goals are coming from this season. You know, you've got Pigger, you've got Bon. Great interview by the way today. If either of you have read it in the East Anglian, yeah, um, fantastic. Great, isn't it? Yeah. Really I'll nice. It's it's like us. One of us pulled on the shirt that it means so much to him and. Look, you can have your loan players come in. We've had some good loan players. We've had some really crap loan players. And I know he's a loan player, but he's a fan, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. I'd be. I'll tell you what, Rich. I'd be absolutely staggered if he don't. Uh, if he don't get signed permanently, if we go up, I'd be absolutely staggered. I, I think he'll, he'll probably he'll probably sign a two three year contract if um, we go up. No mm. doubt about that. And yeah. I'll tell you what, you're absolutely right, Rich, about that. Um, about that article of Danny East Anglia. I tell you, Nick and I made a hair stand up on the back of my neck, you know, when he was talking about, like, you know, kick, kicking up the, you know, up the field and then they go and get the fish and chips and all that. Lovely, you know, that's what we've all done, isn't it? You know what I mean, Tux? You know what I mean, Rich? Mm-hmm. What we all used to do, you know, have a game up the up wreck and then go and maybe get a portion of fish and chips. Brilliant. It was, yeah. interesting. it was interesting, Colin, when he said... That he was gutted that he got released when he was 14. And the reason they released him, because he wasn't fit enough. Yeah. He's a 14-year-old kid. He said he's still growing. Um, I'm just wondering, Tuff, where do you think yeah. he's going to fit in? Because the system we play, is Cookie going to go with the one up top? Is he going to change and go to two? What do you reckon? 
Well, I think it's all about form at the end of the day. I'm a big believer of that, you know, you have to accommodate the players that you're in form, not just shoehorn players, but, you know, the players that are in form in their rightful positions. Um, and one thing we have been guilty of is shoehorning players, you know, not in their rightful positions. But we've got three quality strikers uh, with Norwood, uh, you know, Bon and... Um, I forgot his name now from Wimbledon. Piggott. Piggott. Um, so all three of them, you know, they've all scored goals at this level. They know how to play. They know how to play this 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 league. So if they play together, I could imagine that, you know, if one of them gets, you know, if two of them get a couple of goals here and there, especially in the first four, four or five games of the season, then he might go with two up front. But, you know, who starts is probably another question on, on the opening day. But I suppose you've probably got to go for Piggott potentially because of the, you know, the, the record that he had last year. Uh, but it, it it just does depend. It you know it's it's the team that goes out and starts that season. They have to keep their shirt. Uh, you know what we don't want is you know pissing about a lot of the time when you know Lambert was obviously guilty of that, where he was just sort of just taking players out for for the fun of it, what it seemed like. But um, keep keep the players that are playing on form, play for the shirt, job done. But I think when if you're a striker and you look at them first few games, I think you fancy your chances. Morecambe, yeah. Cheltenham. Uh, Burton, MK Dons at home, Wimbledon yeah. at home. If you if you're a striker, you'd be thinking, Cookie, get me in that team. I fancy yeah. grabbing myself a few goals here against this yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think they're going to be a lot of. We're going to be a much fitter team as well. Um, so yeah, I'd, I, I'm really excited to see what what Piggott and Bond can offer us. Really, I agree. Um, I agree with you there about fitness. But don't you think that the lads we've signed, we've signed some units. They look like athletes, mm. like Raheem Harper. Yeah. Even Lee, Lee Evans. Look yeah. at the song. Look. But yeah. they're, they're all footballers who can play. But in yeah. this league, it's not about just playing. You've got to be able to mix it up as well. And I think mm. this season, that was where I think we fell down last yeah. year with like Andre, yeah. you know, Teddy. Um, mm. We were a bit too lightweight, weren't we? Yeah, I was, I was saying to someone the other day with, with Andre that, you know, he's he's very good going forward. You know, he's got that killer pass in him. But, you know, so if, if, the ball's, if, if the team's got the other ball... He's absolutely non-existent. Like defensively, he was shite. Uh, you know, same with Teddy Bishop. You know, it's 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 all very well going forward, but what can you do with the ball when when the opposition have got the ball? You know, so yeah, yes, yeah, so I agree with Matt Stannard there, the new fitness coach. He's a unit as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Hello, Ian. Did, did, did both <laughs> you see the training videos they put out yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what. On, on that, Rich, I've got. Yeah, I'll give him a bit of credit. I must admit, Norwood did look trim on there. Mm. He looked trim. He looked like you know, he's thing, had a... You know, one thing, yeah. you know one thing as well? He's Sorry? lost the man bun. He's lost the man bun as well. Yeah. 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 Thank, uh, thank God for that, Reg. <laughs> no, I think it's a big season. It's a big season for him coming yeah. into the last year yeah. of his contract. Mm. I'm not his biggest fan. I, look, I think he can score goals. No doubt he can get goals at this level if you give the service to him. Just needs to get his head down, concentrate on playing football. He probably he'll probably start on the bench, I would think. Mm. Uh, yeah. But when he gets his chance, he's got to come in and he's really got to grab it. And he's got he's mm. giving him the kick up the arse that he might need. You know, them two coming yeah. in, he's not a top dog. I'll tell you what, Rich. I totally agree with you. If I had to put money on who would start the first game, I would put money on Pigger and Bond Starn. I'd I'd start both of them against Morgan. I would. <laughs> Depends what he plays. I, I, I would, I would, Richard. I would. I'd pick both of them at home against Morecambe, Piggott well, and Bob. Four, four, two. Four, four, two. Yes, I would. I'd go for it all day long against Morecambe. Well, I tell I, you what, I would as well. I'd I just, I'm not sure he will though. I think he's he's coming. He's, no, he's that's got fair his enough. Ideas, touch. That's fair enough, Tuck. So I understand that. But what I'm saying is, especially what Bond said today, he said, you know, putting that putting that shirt on. Gives him what? What was it? Another fifteen or twenty percent, or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I don't believe it. I, th I, I think I'll give him another fifty percent. How, how he's been talking, I think. Go out there in front of twenty, twenty-two thousand. His mates in there. His mum in there. His dad in there. I'll tell you what. I'd play him all day long against Morkham, and I think you would do it as well, Chuck. And you, Rich. I wouldn't start him. I wouldn't Will start him. Not in. Not in. If not, if they're playing a four-two-three-one. You only play in one central yeah. striker, and it, I think it's nailed on to be Piggott. Piggott's yeah. got twenty odd goals last season in this league, and I think oh, yeah. if he didn't start, that'd be really hot. He could go four three three. He could have two two up top with Fraser just sitting in behind them. I don't know. Mm. It's, isn't it nice that we've got options now? 
Yeah. We haven't even, we haven't even spoken about Caden Jackson. You know, he's right out in the cold. He was playing. He was playing down at Needham Market last night with a bomb squad, wasn't he? He's, yeah, he's, he's playing. He's not an option for me anymore. He hasn't no, been for a while. Um, is, he's, is in your is in your bin, Rich Jackson. Yeah, I'm still surprised, guys, that no one's come in for him. I think he could yeah, do probably. a job. Not at us. His time at Town's yeah. over. But he could do a job in this league. He's he's he, yeah. He's he's a League One striker. I don't think he's a Championship striker by any stretch of the imagination. But I think he's a League One striker. But the trouble with him. Is that he needs someone like a Piggott or a Norwood yeah. that, that is next yeah. to him all the time? He can't yeah. play up front on his own. He needs that striker with him, and that's where he's never going to be playing for us anymore. I don't think because you know Cook's got that idea of playing one up front, uh, but also he's have, seen enough of him. A lot of teams play that now, isn't he? Yeah. One up front. So he, yeah. he, I think he'll, he'll get a move. Yeah. <laughs> he needs he needs to go for himself to play football. Yeah, Flynn, it's all gone quiet on Flynn, hasn't it? He was linked to Bournemouth last week. Now he's running around that need him. I just think it's really sad with Lindau. I think there's a really good player in there. Yeah. Um, he's probably I, I, think, I think, yeah, I think, I think he's been poorly advised, if I'm honest. And, yeah. You know, it's with all that sort of transfer requests and stuff like that. If he hadn't done that, yeah. he would still be here, I, I think. He's, I know he's still here, but he would have been in the plans of Cook. Um, but I think that's probably the, what Cook's got in the back of his mind, that he doesn't kind of want to be here. He wants to play elsewhere and he hasn't got his mind on the job. And there was kind of elements of last season where... You know, he wasn't at his best, but you could sort of see that he was a little bit distracted. I know he was injured, but he was a little bit distracted, yeah. in my opinion. Do you know what, Tax? You made you made a you made a really good really good point there about being poorly advised. Hmm. I'll tell you what, he's not the only one by a long chalk. I'll tell oh, you yeah, what. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention names. I'm not gonna mention names. Rich and yourself, you know what I'm talking about. I personally think there was another player who could have been a player in a year or two. I mean, you know, a real player at our club. And he's been, and I passed, I, this is my personal opinion, I think he's been um, poorly advised as well. I just hope it works out for him. But I'm not 100% sure about that. And especially listening to Daniel Farger today, I haven't mentioned any names, and I'm not going to. But listening to Daniel <laughs> Parker today, I mentioned Norwich. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, listening to Daniel Parker today, I'm not so sure this certain person is going to be in that team anytime soon. Uh, look, I know yeah. you want. Look, I know you're talking about Liam Kipps. Um Badly I, advised. Possibly, you, we can't tell because he's still a young player. No one knows yeah. the future. No one knows what's going to uh, happen. I think they said that we've agreed a fee with Norwich. 500 yeah. grand, maybe. Look, we move on. Look, yeah. we've got, we're going to have new new people that, we, that we're watching every week who turn into heroes for kids. Mm. Um, he could have been one, possibly. No one will never know. He only played one game, didn't he, for the first yeah. team? Yeah. Now That's, all. That's all. Yeah. all bit if, buts, and maybes, Colin, really, isn't it, with him? 100%, mate. But, move on. Move I on. Do with, I do agree with Flynn. I agree with you there, Tux. It was. He's obviously his agent's got in his ear yeah. last preseason. He's come back, didn't help that when he yeah. got back in the team. I think was it two or three games, and he'd done his knee at MK. Mm. He was out yeah. for three months, and then he, he never got going. But yeah, look, there's, I'm there's, there's, there's a player in there. There's a player in there, as you say, Rich. Oh, you know, he's he's a very good player, but he. You know, he's he has to have his mind on the job for me, I think, to get the real best out of him. It's like with any player, I suppose. But, yeah, I think he's he's kind of, uh, whether it's him or whether it's his agent sort of blowing smoke up his ass. But, you know, he, I think he's kind of looking ahead now. He's not really bothered about what Ipswich have either done for him or what we do, what we could do for him. But then you've got um, Hawks in the chat there. He's, he's saying a lad of that quality can never spend three seasons in League One. And I know a lot of people yeah. are saying yeah. he didn't shine for us last year. I think he's another player. He played in the championship. No, no problem. I think mm, he's good enough. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. But so Saturday, uh, Crystal Palace. I know you're not going, Colin. Are you going Tuck Saturday? Oh, I'm not going. I've got another barbecue, mate. Sun <laughs> 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 time, man. Sun's going, yeah. mate. That's the last day of sun. I'm not going to either of the friendlies. I want to when I go back against Morecambe. I don't want to ruin it by going to a a friendly that's played at half pace. You know, it's look, it'd be a good test against Palace. Obviously, they've got Patrick Vieira now. Um, it'd be nice for the fans to see 
the new players. Um, what do you think? What do you think to the COVID regs then going back, Mark? Um, it's it's a difficult one, really, and I think you know it's it's going to be. I mean, that, you know, the whole virus is going to be with us for a long time, I think, and we've got to, you know, do our best to, you know, just sort of get past it, really, and it's going to be with us. We've got to live with it, I suppose. But, you know, I think it. What the positive for me is that, you know, we are getting back to some normality, and I think the last bit of normality was getting, you know, these kind of events going again and, you know, getting back into football grounds and stuff like that, going to gigs, concerts, whatever you want. But, yeah, it's... It's going to be it's going to be a difficult one. There's going to be lots of people that turn up don't want to wear a face mask, and you know, fair enough because it's not a law anymore. You can't really do much about it, but also you kind of got a duty to yourself to protect you and your family and other people as well. But yeah, it's that's that's your decision. Um, but from a football club point of view, I'm just really excited to just get back to where I belong is important road. Um, and I've missed it so much, and it's one of these sort of things where you can watch so many games on a on a laptop or on a phone or something like that on iFollow, but it's yes. not the same. It's not the same. Um, you know, you, I can't wait to, you know, probably either get in the North Stand and, you know, sing my heart out for, for the first time in, what, two years? Um, and it's ridiculous when you think about it, but, yeah, it's... I just can't wait for it. It's going to be so amazing, especially with with the team that we're building as well. You know, the new owners coming in. It's just going to be such a, a new era that we can really be proud of, I think. And hopefully we can do something by the end of it and get some sort of promotion. See, that's interesting, Matt Stannard, there in the um, in the comments, because you've got time you're going to have on your ticket. I don't know how they're going to... They can't enforce that. I know a, a mate who went to England-Croatia. He went to a few games of the Euros. England-Croatia at Wembley, two o'clock kickoff. He had on his ticket... 11 p.m. 11 a.m. He had to be in the stadium. He didn't get yeah. in there till 20 to 2. <laughs> but I know it's only a guide. On they don't, what they don't want is a load of people rocking up all at once. Yeah. I can see why. It'd be interesting. I don't know how they're going to do it with the season tickets. When your season ticket comes, I think they said they're sending them out this week. How are mm. they going to give you a time then? I don't really know. I, look, I agree with you. There'll be a lot of people going back a little bit, like your older generation, a little bit sort of, I think that's human nature, isn't it, really? Yeah, but yeah. it's, it's going to be that first game. It's going to be so nice to go back, see your friends, see your yeah. mates. You know, I think there'll be so much emotion, mm. not just not just in our stadium. I think yeah. the stadiums all yeah. around the country, yeah. you know, because three, what, year, year and a half, mm. football's been taken away from us. You know, we've, like you say, sitting watching on your phone, laptops, it don't give you the same. And when you watch, like, the Euros on the telly, you see fans going absolutely mental and you think, give me some of that because yeah. it's what we want, isn't it? It's yeah. what we do. It's what we. It's what a lot of people live for on a Saturday and a Tuesday, going out, a few beers with your mates, getting in the ground, having a sing song mm. and then after the game, chewing the fat when you've you've won or you've lost. And I, I cannot wait. I cannot wait, guys, to get back. I yeah. honestly can't. Yeah, exactly. What about you, Colin? Oh, no, I'm, I'm I'm absolutely the same. And going on from what Tux was saying about the face mask, and it is a difficult one because it is. You got to be we've got to be um, very measured about this. You know, it's a difficult one, and and uh, and I agree with the fact with the double vaccination or people have got red tests and everything. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. I mean, I've got my season ticket lower, uh, Bobby Robson, and um, and I as kind of. I'll be mean, asked sat or stood in every stand in the ground obviously but uh it's kind of like you know i'm going kind of back home i, I just want to be where the, where's a bit of atmosphere and everything i love it i don't care whether they stand up if, if i if my legs are not i sit down for a little while i'll sit down for a little while and don't see nothing that don't bother me i'd rather be where the boys are you know um but going back to the going back to the covid thing and, and i totally agree with um tux um but I'm, wonder, but I'm wondering, with the face coverings in the North Stand, especially as I still call it, I'm wondering how many people could be wearing face masks. I know that. I shouldn't laugh, but I bet you there won't be many. It's in the concourse, isn't it? I think they want, want you to wear them yeah, in yeah. the concourse. They yeah, yeah. did say in your seats, but it's obviously that's down to That's, down that's, to that's what I meant, that. Rich. That's what I meant, Rich. You will have people sitting there with a mask on, and if, that, if that's what they want to do... You have That's to respect fine. people. Mm. That's what mm. all you have to do. It's a hard one for the stewards. I know they'll 
look, they've got a hard enough job as it is in the North Stand, you know, containing all, all when things are going well or things are going wrong. You know, they want people to sit down. That's hard. Um, but they, I just think, just hope that people are respectful towards the stewards as well because it's, it's going to be a hard job for them. You know, yeah. this is unknown territory for everyone exactly. going back to football, mm. you know. But it's just nice we're going to go back. Look, you, you two probably, you go to games. I've met people at football. I've got no idea who they are. You go every week or every couple of weeks, you'll chat to them. You won't know the name. You don't yeah. know who they are. But yeah. you, if you sit in your same seat for 10, 20 years, they, they're like just part of your life, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get they get a bit they get they get a bit like um, part of your family really. Mm. Definitely, yeah. I get but that. It is what it is. Um, I think that's about it, isn't it? I think we ain't got a lot more. Oh, I just got a quick shout out. So, don't know if, oh, you can't see that. I had a delivery today from Away Days Beers. So whoever I don't know who it was, me, Matt, and Martin all got um, some beers. Alan McDonald, do you remember him? Yeah. Northern Ireland International. So whoever it was who paid for them, I just want to say thanks very much because I had a few anyway. Uh, have you had Have you had any yet, Mark? Oh, I haven't, mate. You know, but I'm going to order some. You need to order some for your Barbies if you're out there in the garden. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Is Martin coming in? Is that you, Martin? There. Oh, he's frozen. Don't know what's happening. That is. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We We can see you. Was that good enough for you? Beautiful. I, are you finished? Yeah, we've done, mate. Good hour. Perfect. I'll go then. Sorry, I was having an ice cream. I was, I was, I was in the world of my own. I was like, <laughs> when are you back? When do you come back? I love you. When do you come back? Uh, over the weekend. Anyway. Over the weekend. But it's, it was a great list. Honestly, you three, you knocked it out of the park. Truly knocked it out of the park. Well done to you all. The comment section is has been a, a light all night. I can't thank you enough. Um, but I'm going to my watermelon uh, man 